I feel like this has probably been my most popular series, so I hope you enjoy it. Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking through how you can use MSAL to get an access token from a front end and send it to a back end and be authorized. So this is using the on behalf of Flow in Microsoft in order to basically get a access token for one like service from another service. And so that is what we're gonna be doing in today's episode. I feel like this has probably been my most popular series. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please give me some like tips or comments on what it is you would like to to see next in this video series as well as that do be sure to check out my previous episodes on this because you will need to use those episodes to configure your app registrations and your set like api service and your front end service as well but hopefully as long as you've done that this should work just as intended without further ado let's get into the video so i am just going to show you what we've done so far since the previous like episode. It wasn't really an episode, it was just me coding live with Cursor AI and rewriting the front end so that I had a list of students and I had two like two pages rather than just the single login button. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to show you how you can lock down certain functions from a front end. I want to show you how you can talk to the back end to get an access token to do certain commands. And that was the best way to do it by having a page that actually brings data back. So as you can see here, we have this list of student data that is currently open to the public. I'm not logged in and I can see this and that's really, really bad. We don't want that to be the case. We wanna make sure that this data is locked down and only people who are accessed and authorized to use the like site can actually get this data. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to my code and I am just going to add the dependency back in. So here you can see there's a dependency here, which basically says you need to have the access as user scope. So that is what I'm gonna add for my student's router. And that's gonna mean that when I now refresh this page, I am going to get a follow on. So you can see I've got a 401 here, but even when I log in now, I'm still gonna get a 401 because I haven't connected the front end and the back end together. So this is just gonna throw a 401 because I aren't actually sending an access token to the back end from the front end. So let's go through how you can do that now. So typically when you are using MSAL, you can do that one or two ways in React. So the first way you can do that is by getting the token directly in a React component. This is probably used for people who are just wanting to do it direct from React. I don't want to do that. I want to create an interceptor that is going to be done for all API calls that use that interceptor rather than having it everywhere littered in my React code base. So I'm going to create an API client that then adds that access token to the headers. So this is the way you can do that by getting the access token outside of React by using just plain old TypeScript. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I am going to go to my student API service here. And as you can see at the moment, this just directly calls the API from Axios. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file called API client. So all of these endpoints need to be using a access token. So we're gonna change them to use an API client that then adds that access token on. So now we have created an API client. What we're going to do is we're going to do, um, we're going to get the instance of MSCL. Uh, and then I always just add the imports in. And then we're also going to set the API URL to be here. We're going to create a Axios like base URL. And 
And then we're going to create an interceptor. So as you can see, GitHub Copilot is really, really great and it's already done the majority of this for me. So it's creating an um, interceptor that is going to get an, the active account currently. And if that active account exists, then it's going to try and acquire that token silently. And then it's going to add the access token to the authorization header. So that is pretty much all I need to do in order to get that working. So I'm just going to change this scope to be the scope that I need, which if we go to our main part, Python um, file here, we can just remove what was there and replace it with this. GitHub Copilot is good in some ways, but sometimes it misses things out like this. So as you can see, that's been added now. And the last thing that I need to do is I need to switch my um, call here to be my API client. So I need to change this to be my API. And then I just need to import Blech. and I'm just going to import that. It's not detecting it annoyingly. So now I have my API client imported, I just need to switch all of these to use that API client. So now all of these use my API client and I can remove this API URL here and I can also remove Axios from here as well, which will be good because if we ever want to add new API endpoints, we can just use the same API client rather than having to try and duplicate logic and having to create this access token in loads of different places. So I'm just gonna go back to my front end now and verify that this is working. Okay, so it's uninitialized public client application. You must call await the initialized function before attempting to call any other in the CLI API. That's fine. So one of the things that we probably need to do in our API client is before we do our API client interceptor, we need to actually wrap this within um, MSAL instance and just say initialize. So this just makes sure that like the MSAL instance is actually initialized and you actually can get like the information that you need from it. So now that that's added, then everything should run smoothly. I keep saying that, but who knows? Yes, absolutely. It is now working. And if we put a breakpoint in our code, so I'm just gonna refresh this, make sure that it all works. And then I am going to a breakpoint. Uh, API client. And I'm just going to put a breakpoint in here because I want to verify that this is actually working. So if I go into delete and I say delete, you can see it's going into here and then it's going into here. It's getting the access token. You can see the access token is here. And I'm just gonna take this access token out and verify that that's the access token that I want. And then I'm just gonna continue and see, yep, that that's deleted my, my um, user. And if I just go to jwt.io, I'm just gonna verify the contents of my access token. Oh, I didn't copy it properly. 
So I'm just going to go back in here. And delete. And continue. And as you can see, this has all my user information in there. So it's using my user jadewilson at hotmail.co.uk and it is accessing as user. So that's doing what I anticipate it to do. And it has all the appropriate claims and things that I'm expecting it to have, such as the scope access as user. And that is basically all I need to do in order to get the like front end communicating with the back end. So of course you can't just do this directly. You need to do the initial setup that I outlined in my previous videos so I can link them there. But that is pretty much all there is in order to send an access token from the front end to the back end and doing it in a way that doesn't like touch loads of different parts of your system. It only is localized to one part of your system. And if you wanted to use that API client for public endpoints, for example, you could do that by just having some sort of flag to say whether or not it's a public endpoint. So that's everything. And you'll see, even if I log out now, and I go back to here, and I go to students again, I'm gonna get another 401. And that's just because you need to be logged in in order to access that endpoint. In the next video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be locking down this endpoint so that you can't actually get to it if you aren't authorized. So it'll just route you back to the home page. If you keep trying to get to this endpoint, for example, rather than just giving you this nasty error saying like request fails 401, we could do something differently as well. We could have an unauthenticated template there, but I think the best thing to do is to, if someone's trying to like gamify the system and try and hit endpoints that they shouldn't be able to access, just to redirect them to the, the home page. And that's all from me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please can you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I post weekly content on my YouTube and I also post daily content on my LinkedIn and I also post on my blog. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.